Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Demon Slayer the Entertainment District arc episode number 5. Okay, the previous episode. Um, Zenitsu is currently missing. Uh, we don't, we kind of know where he is because we saw in the episode, uh, in the ending of episode uh, 3 that she, he was apparently caught by Daki most probably and uh, seeing how Daki's power is related to uh, absorbing people in in her ob um he like you know probably zenitsu is within her ob somewhere most probably just like how makio is also probably in her ob now there are there are still a few uh, like you know little mysteries kind of going on you know we still don't properly know what's happening uh but um i don't know i feel like uh you know there there is something going on because we can see that she she's traveling from one of the from one house to another from one house to another and um at the same time her power is absorbing the people so maybe she's basically just transporting people from one house to another like it's easy for her to do that because she can just go there grab them put it in her ob and just go somewhere else just like she did uh to uh, what was her name Ko Koinatsu, yeah, Koinatsu Iran. You know, she went to the house, captured her, you know, absorbed her in Robi. And, you know, like Tanjiro, however Tanjiro was able to save her, he was able to kind of carefully slash off the Obi piece. And uh, Koinatsu is with him currently. Uh, so, yeah, so there is something going on. She's either traveling from one place to another like that using her Obi, or there is more than one demon involved in this. We'll have to wait for that. Uh, another weird thing is there is no information about Hinatsuru. We know something about Makia. We also have a little information about Suma, kind of, but nothing about Hinatsuru. Like that's another thing. Like that's kind of bothering me. All these things are happening. Um, Tengen felt a little responsible for this, and so he said that you guys back off. You know, like I'll handle this from here onwards. But obviously Zenitsu is captured, so they can't do that. So yeah and in the end we get a little fight with the start of the fight between tanjiro and the daki um that is very strong obviously she has uh, encountered multiple hashiras before and defeated them and tanjiro is not quite at that level so either like you know tengen has to come in or maybe nezuko will join in their fight we'll have to see so yeah without further ado let's get started uh, this is episode number five of demon slayer the entertainment district arc so I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here, sync it to whichever is your preference, and let's get started. Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one. Cool. Yeah, they're at quite a distance. Yeah, there you go. Oh no, that's Tengen, okay. Who the? Oh, is that Hinatsu? Oh, there you go. I was just saying that we have no idea where she is. And there she is. Okay. So, obviously, she was also captured by Daki, I guess, because. Yeah, like, otherwise, who would even capture her? She's. You know, she, she's strong enough to handle herself, obviously because she's one of the ninjas. So, it must be Daki who captured her. All right, let's go. Let's go. I'm pretty excited for the fight. Okay. Things are gonna get real flashy. Okay, Tengen will join in, I guess. That means. <laughs>
Hmm. There you go. What I mean, I got her. Oh. Obi. Oh. Wow. So, so Daki has been involved with everything. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Whoa, what the uh, Damn, his ninja instincts. <laughs> underground? What? Wait, it's happening underground? Oh my god, he's gonna do sound breathing. Wait, what's happening underground? Wait, what's... Wait, what's happening underground? They're fighting on... Oh boy. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh great. Oh boy. Wilder is subpar. Okay. Yeah, like, makes sense, you know, because he's. You know, Kamikagura. But he needs... Okay. <laughs> well, that's not in Inuskid's dictionary. <laughs> nice. Oh my god. Woo! Oh boy, yeah, there you go. It's it's affecting him. <laughs> yeah. Really? Okay. Oh, here we go. Let's go. Fire will work a lot better against Daki because she's using Obi. And just... There you go. Nice. Ah, yes. Come on. Oh. Oh, nice. Two hit strike. Okay, here comes another one. Oh no! Wait, what the? Wait, what happened? F 
fake rainbow. Oh! Hopefully. Oh no. Yeah, there you go. Ah. Whoa, what's happening? Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. Oh. Uh. Come on, Tengen, anytime. We need your help here. Oh boy. Okay, thank God. He's able to defend himself. Oh, n <sighs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Oh, great. It, it's not that much. 104 Fahrenheit is... Or is it centigrade? Uh, no, I doubt it's centigrade. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm dumb. I said centigrade. Obviously, it's not centigrade. <laughs> It's Fahrenheit. <laughs> okay. Is it really good to fight like this? Like at high temperature? I don't know. Like it feels like it will have some repercussions or something. Yeah. If he really ends up defeating uh, Daki here, I would be very surprised. Like... Hmm. Okay. Well, I feel like this will have some kind of side effects or something, you know, like constantly fighting in, in like a high temperature or something. But that's not normal. Whoa. Oh, Inosuke. <laughs> talking about Inosuke. <laughs> okay, you're spitting everywhere. Yeah, seeing is believing. There you go. <laughs> Run. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Okay, what did he find? Um You need to dig more. <laughs> okay, what? Whoa, what the? Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh. 
Okay. Suddenly Saitama pops up, you know. <laughs> okay, there you go. Oh, is this Makio's place? I think so. Okay. Oh, there you go. There's Makio. Oh, um, Suma's also here. Okay, every so everyone was captured by. Oh boy. Yeah, makes sense. Is this like a nest or something? Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's slap him awake. Oh, whoa. Oh my god. There you go. There's another one. I knew it. There you go, I knew it. There was someone someone else. Stink bug. <laughs> Over oh my god. Okay, calm down, Inosuke. Okay, there you go. Like... Yeah. Okay, so... Inosuke seems a lot stronger than... This thing. <laughs> Infant food locker. Oh boy, there you go. So yeah, she's obviously involved in this, but wait. Oh yeah. There you go, I knew it. She would say that Inosuke is... Oh, oh great. Oh! Oh no. Wow, that was cool. Yeah, quickly. Oh, oh my God. This is a very, yeah, difficult situation. And there's so many of them that he needs to protect. Not one or two. Oh, thank God, yes! <laughs> My God! <laughs> what you forgot? Whoa! <laughs> okay. Yeah. True, unless and until Tanjiro does something. Okay, there you go. Yes! He's asleep. Oh! Come on!
Oh, these things are also here. Oh, thank God. And he's also asleep. <laughs> Kicking him. Two sounds? Wait, what? Oh, wait, Tengen! Oh, Tengen is here! Oh, that's what Tengen was thinking! Underground, okay. I understand now what's happening. That's what I... Okay. <laughs> well, don't worry. Help is coming. Well, it's... I doubt you'll be able to handle Tengen. However strong this thing is. Yep. And there you go. <laughs> oh. Whew. Everyone's saved. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Is this a backstory? Yeah. <laughs> I'm allowing it. Law-abiding citizens and finally me. Wow. <laughs> nice. There you go. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Starts crying. Suma does look like a lot like Inosuke, you know? Kind of, not a lot, but kind of. <laughs> Flashy. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's end this here. Whoa. Ah. I'm waiting for that. Come on. Oh boy. There you go. It's the end. <laughs> the next episode even flashier than this will be even flashier than this episode oh why wow that was great okay okay so <laughs> apparently all the questions i had all these episodes got answered in one episode every answer now i'm kind of like you know <laughs> what can i say um a little bit what can i say um happy that my uh you know like deduction you can call it came out to be true that there were actually two even though it was not it is not true like the ob is actually a part of um daki but still it's like two entities which i was kind of able to um you know uh, predict 
because obviously like the sound were different the voice actor the voice actor of Daki and this Obi thing were different which I was able to recognize when uh, they were showing us the scene where Makio was captured uh, that's when I realized is there's either something is going on or there is two people involved in this and turns out it is kind of true even though it's not two people but it's two entities uh, the Obi is obviously a part of Daki, I understand that. But still, it's a different entity. <sighs> Alright, that's the end. Oh, oh there's a, the thing left. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> oh boy. Come on! Yeah! Zenitsu? <laughs> Oh. Oh, okay. That step forward first. Oh, okay. Layered memes. Wait a minute. Just a sec. Let me check that portion out again. What did he say? Um. Uh, the portion where uh, Suma step. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, um, Uzu's family practices polygamy and I hear that when you turn 15, um, <clears throat> the head of the family picks out three wives who are sure to be compatible. But they say Suma stepped forward herself. Oh, okay, I understand. Uh, so it's basically saying that uh, the head actually, like, you know, like, um, <clears throat> chooses the people who are the most compatible to him. But uh, this, like you know, but in in uh, Tengen's uh, what do you call it time, uh, he no Suma stepped forward herself. Suma, Suma, the that girl, uh, the girl who was crying. That's Suma, isn't it? Yeah, that's Suma. The yellow-haired girl is Makio, the yellow and black-haired girl, and um, the other girl who we found out, uh, who Tengen found at first, is Hinatsuru, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right, so this episode, um, as I said, everything got answered here. You know, all my suspicions, like in all this time, I've been suspecting someone else being involved in this, even though it's not someone else, as per se, it is a different entity. And you know, like it is like it is kind of two two things are involved in this. Two demons, not two demons, but two entities. One is Zaki, one is that Ob thing that was talking. So, so I was right in a way. <laughs> Another thing is that we get to know what was actually happening, how they were actually doing this. Like I was always wondering that where were they taking and keeping these people who Daki was, you know, consuming with her Obi. It also got answered here. This basically underground, there was like a nest thing, you know, where I'm guessing she was capturing the different people and taking them there and, you know, consuming the ones who are, according to her standards, not beautiful enough and keeping the top 10 most beautiful people according to her standards again <laughs> there for i don't know why but probably something oh yeah i remember he, she said something about like consuming them herself or something the most beautiful parts of them something like that so, so that's what she has always been doing and uh, i'm guessing they, she was actually uh, Daki I'm talking about. Daki was actually uh, in the process of transporting Hinatsuru. That's why she was outside, not underground or something maybe. Like, like Hinatsuru kind of explains what happened to her. She says that she, <coughs> you know, like she, she got found out. Warabihime gave her the Obi, which obviously had like, you know, was given to her because he wanted to keep an eye on her and like you know like if if something else happens kill her off so that's why like you know she and she was found out basically quickly and uh, okay so she was poisoned yeah she gave uh Tengen gives her the antidote and i'm sure she'll be fine hopefully and yeah now Tengen 
Now here's where the confusion started. I was like, what's happening? Like, you know, aren't they, aren't Tanjiro and the Daki fighting above ground? So why is Tengen finding, like, you know, like, finding a sound source underground? Now, that answers itself uh, on its own, in, like, you know, as, as the episode goes on. But we'll talk about that later. First, um, we get the little fight between Daki and Tanjiro, where Tanjiro, like, you know, sees that he cannot do anything. Uh, with his water breathing because it's not compatible not compatible but it's not yeah you can say it's not compatible to him and but at the same time if you use um <clears throat> hinokami kagura it this there's a lot of uh what do you call it what do you call it side no side effect yeah side effect or something like you know like Something like that, that happens where he cannot do anything, loses all energy and strength for a few moments. And that's very dangerous in life and death situations in like, you know, these type of situations where you're involved in a huge scale fight, uh, one versus one. So, like we also get a little flashback where we see Zenitsu, Tanjiro and them, like, you know, were training and he realized what was happening when he used, um, you know Kamikagura, but here obviously he he needed to do it otherwise Daki would have killed him so it was really cool you know like when he used his new technique when Daki tried to you know attack him and it, it felt like he she hit him but at the, at the same time that was like an after image I think suddenly like you know it disappeared and uh, Tanjiro came from uh, behind her but even with all of that Daki still said that oh this is slow and just like you know whacked it away so like that's what I was saying you know like I would have been like it is impossible for Tanjiro to actually defeat Daki in this stage at his current power level uh, maybe Tengen can defeat her but we're still not so sure because uh, Daki has already defeated so many Hashiras before so <clears throat> maybe if we gang up on her maybe we can defeat her or something but I don't know We'll have to wait for that. I, I think maybe Tengen would be able to handle himself against Sadaki. <clears throat> we'll have to wait for the future episodes to see what happens. Okay, um, and here again we see the opening thread. The opening thread which we saw in season 1. Which, I'll be honest, I kind of forgot about for a second. <laughs> when they showed us the opening thread here, I was like, wait a minute, what's happening here? And then I realized, oh yeah, this is... Uh, like you know this like you know this was also in season one like i apparently forgot completely about the opening thread and uh, but now like you know like i i remember now okay the opening thread was shown where obviously the opening thread in like you know indicates that yeah you'll be able to defeat that person if you are like you know properly able to uh, attack like that's like an opening thread like where you can strike and it will be probably a lethal blow uh, unfortunately that opening break like you know um string does not always persist because as soon as the other person you know gets uh alerted or something it breaks off so unless and until like you know like like when the chance is still there that thread is intact when the chance is gone it breaks off so obviously at the beginning tanjiro when she tried to strike daki she he saw the opening thread but like you know in a matter of seconds daki completely diff like you know uh, uh reversed the situation where the opening thread broke off and Instead, she <clears throat> strike back and Tanjiro was injured. And we also see a little bit of where Tanjiro says like, you know, the temperature that he has also kind of uh, heightens his combat capability. And, <clears throat> you know, like higher temperature means uh, he can bet fight better. Uh, now, here's one thing that I don't know, like I feel like there might be some repercussions, like 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously, it's it's not that much, you know, like it's it's not too high, but at the same time, it's not a normal temperature a human should have. So always, like you know, like fighting in that condition. I don't know. I feel like uh, maybe, but maybe not. These are demon slayers, like you know, like um, some like you know a little high fever would probably not like you know affect them or anything. <laughs> You know, like it's like 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit it's kind of like a little fever like not that much like I, it would have been I, I think it probably would have been very dangerous if it won't to went to 102 or 103 degrees Fahrenheit but it's at 100 degree Fahrenheit 
so <clears throat> hopefully everything is okay like you know nothing like no bad side effect happens because of this we'll have to wait now for a moment i kind of said at that <laughs> At that time I said like is this centigrade or Fahrenheit and then I realized like what am I even saying like 100 degrees centigrade is the boiling point of water so <laughs> it's impossible so yeah obviously it's Fahrenheit it's not centigrade like it's impossible for that to be centigrade <laughs> but yeah uh, anyways um, we saw like you know like Sanjiro was like fighting and everything Daki kind of realized something was happening on the other side and here we see Inosuke you know, like, Inosuke also being able to find out someone was in here. You know, he breaks down and starts, you know, digging his way through underneath. And here we get meet the weird Obi with face. The Obi has a face, which I'm guessing is, this is something that's obviously related to Daki. And Daki, I'm guessing Daki is like the main person and it's just like a, a little extension of her or something. And... <clears throat> yeah so so i'm guessing what happens is daki captures these uh people you know uh she and this thing transports it here keeps them here and feeds on the uh, people who are not beautiful according to her and keeps the beautiful people intact and that's how it gains uh, strength, I'm guessing. Because we saw those bones, you know, underneath. So I'm guessing those are the remains of the people who, like, you know, who the OB ate. And... Yeah. Okay. Thankfully here, I was a little bit concerned. Uh, because, you know, like, this thing was like, he had to, Inosuke had to save, not save, but protect all the people that was here. And it was not one or two person. But it was a lot, a lot of, there were a lot of people here that he needed to protect and they were scattered around, they were not even in one place. So, I was kind of concerned here, like what would Inosuke do, because fighting the Obi is one thing, but protecting the, oh, so many people and fighting the Obi, trying to, like, you know, not let it consume the people, because if it consumes the people, like, you know, it would defeat the whole purpose of saving them. So, that thing, and obviously it will also get stronger. So I was a bit concerned that Inosuke, not only Inosuke, I think nobody could do that. Like, you know, like there's like so many, like 10, 20 people here or maybe more than them. So protecting all of them scattered around, like, you know, is impossible. So I was kind of concerned. I was thinking like, what's he going to do here? Thankfully, um, while like, you know, cutting off the Obis, uh, Makio and Suma were also released and they started helping out. Obviously they are ninjas, they can help out. And obviously, uh, Zenitsu was also unleashed. And a sleeping Zenitsu, as soon as a sleeping Zenitsu is unleashed, everything, like, <laughs> you can't do anything. And Zenitsu just, like, you know, zaps across the whole place using his thunder breathing. And just, like, you know, like, kind of cuts off all the Obi pieces, helping out the other people who were trapped. Now, I wonder what uh, the Obi is actually going to do now. Because not only that... But Tengen also come like you know ends up coming here. So so <laughs> I feel like this <laughs> this this became a lot one-sided, didn't it? Like Tanjiro is there all alone fighting Daki, who is the strongest like you know person here. While here, like for this mere OB piece, you know, <laughs> Inosuke, uh, Zenitsu, Makio, Tuma, and Tengen, five of them are here to fight against this thing. I think this will be a little bit of an overkill, I think, I'm not sure, because, yeah, Tengen can just, like, Tengen himself is enough to handle this Obi, I think so, so, um, yeah, I think this is a bit, <laughs> a bit, um, you know, a bit overwhelming, like, all of them are here at the same place to fight this one, you know, one Obi, <laughs> while uh, Tanjiro there is all alone fighting Daki. My god i'm sure like you know like maybe maybe next episode they'll just like you know uh fight defeat all the obi and then go to uh tanjiro help him out we'll see but tanjiro is in trouble and we need to save him uh hopefully like i'm sure he'll be able to uh handle himself unless and until help help comes but yeah now here we actually meet the wives like properly 
we've all seen pictures of them but we never really got to like you know interact with them so here we properly meet all the three wives of uh, tengen uh, the first one we met in the beginning of the episode was um hinatsuru yeah hinatsuru hinatsuru seems like uh, a person who is very mature you know kind and from the way she talked and from the flashback as far as i could gather and i'm guessing she's one of the more uh, what can you say like calm headed and responsible one uh, you know like she she takes like you know like duty very seriously and uh, like all of them takes their duty very seriously i'm not saying that but i i feel like she you can she's the she's probably the one who would uh, blame herself you know like if something bad happened for example here in the beginning we see her blaming herself saying that like since i wasn't able to do a proper job you know like i betrayed your you know like trust in me and stuff like that so she's that type of a person you know like uh, calm mature um uh, you know like kind and what else like more calm and collected something like that um <clears throat> that's as far as i could gather about hinatsuru um suma suma seems like <laughs> probably a, a quite a clumsy kind of character she cries very easily and you know like she like she's quite emotional i think maybe and uh yeah she seems like a nice like you know nice character and she said she couldn't properly fight i'm guessing she is uh you know like she is she handles stuff more related to intelligence gathering or something like that you know she's not a fighter but she's maybe she's like she acts better as a spy or as a scout or something maybe i'm not sure because we could see her actually struggling to fight <laughs> she was strong she was able to handle herself but at the same time you know not as i'm guessing as proficient as maki or or maybe hinatsu who knows but yeah she's that type of a character you know um you know kind of cries a little bit emotional and uh, uh probably has like you know like uh, what can i say uh yeah emotional emotional i think that's the way to explain like you know uh, refer to her that was uh, suma makio i think obviously makio's personality is very apparent she's probably that uh, like you know like that you know girl who has like a very uh, rough and tough you know like personality yeah uh, kind of like a tomboy and uh, she seems pretty uh, not pretty but kind of a little bit hot headed it feels like <laughs> and um, very straightforward uh, probably a little bit stubborn as well and quite um, uh, yeah something like that you know like like a, kind of like a tomboy as i said like that type of a personality and I'm, i think maybe she she's a, a lot better at fighting than makio i'm not sure about hinatsuru but maybe obviously i'm i'm sure that she's better at fighting than makio mm. <clears throat> but yeah like that's as far as i could gather from them now we get a little bit of a flashback where tengen actually talks to them and tells about how the priority should be of human life first the first and foremost that they should think about is keeping themselves safe you know then uh, the other people you know like other humans and then tengen like according to him that should be the priority list because as he said like you know i want all of you to come back alive to me like you know not throw away your life and this is quite important here because as we know and as we kind of saw here as well ninjas are actually taught to be like you know rec not reckless but like you know like they, they, they are taught to even use their life if it if actually needed like, you know like, like in their own life i think is something that is probably at a very less priority but here tengen actually tells them to put their life first and foremost which is very different from what um you know like ninjas are taught i guess and you know that's what uh, i think maki also said there you go uh, if you put your own life first you cannot get much serious work done is that okay this thing so that's why you know like obviously like you know we know like ninjas go on espionage um spy on people fight like you know protect someone from the shadows and these type of things they need and like you know it's needed for you to keep um uh, low profile and if if you get uh, you know uh, what do you call it captured maybe give up your own life as well because um, most of the times you know like uh, like ninjas obviously has a lot of information and intel on a lot of people maybe a lot of secrets 
So sometimes if, I don't know, maybe they get captured, if like interrogated or something, because before that they probably like, you know, uh, uh, I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just like you know. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just guessing. Maybe they take their own life in, in case they don't say anything to like you know some important intel to the enemy or something. Like that's like that's how they are like you know trained. I'm guessing. And as Makio said, that since we are Kunoichi, female shinobis, um, we obviously we don't have as much power as the male. I think that's what she said. Let me check. Okay, especially since a Kunoichi could never hope to match a male shinobi. There you go. In terms of strength, staking my life is something I only needed minimal effort to do. Like that's why, you know. And but here, like you know, like Tengen just comes up and says that nah, like screw that. <laughs> Your life is first, <laughs> then the other people, and then myself. And yeah, that's like you know that's why I'm saying like it's it's very I'm guessing it's very shocking and surprising to these three because the way they were taught and they were brought up they never thought of it in this way and then suddenly Tengen tells them to like put their life on top obviously they'll be surprised and <clears throat> yeah this is like, it's really great you know like then the, the way Tengen actually explained it and she said that uh, he said that all you need to do is come back to me that's all you need to do so yeah I'm, I'm really liking Ten Tengen you know like as I said like I, from the beginning episode I really liked him because he had that type of a very um what can i say that a vibe you know that uh goofy but mature vibe you know like who has seen a lot of things like i i <laughs> funny thing just let me check one thing um who's his voice actor thing again oh i already checked it <laughs> i forgot um i already checked it uh, in the beginning it's, it's uh, diablo isn't it from Jojo, I think. <laughs> I again forgot. I, I in the first episode I, I checked. I think. Uh, yeah, there you go, Diablo. <laughs> I already checked it. I, I for a moment I forgot. But yeah, as I was saying, like you know, like uh, it's very interesting because I feel his personality is a lot similar to uh, Gintoki uh, from Gintama and um the voice also kind of matches you know gintoki's voice and this guy's like you know, the voice actor uh, kind of it matches like uh, in the, for a moment i, I like you know he, I, I, he he i the first episode i kind of got a feeling that she he had like a gintoki's voice or something but then i checked it out and then i realized that no it's diablo actually but that's what i'm saying you know like he he really reminds me of gintoki that type of a as i said a goofy type of a person but in the end like you know in the inside he's He's quite mature and thinks a lot about stuff and you know like just enjoys life and has like some strict principles strict ideals which he never like you know backs down upon like that type of a personality which is completely gintoki's personality from gintama and since i love gintama and gintoki so much i the first episode really kind of made me like you know like what can i say like maybe like tengen so much because he's kind of like that and i really like that type of a personality you know very calm very cool doesn't take things too seriously but when it's needed to take stuff seriously he's the most serious that type of a person <laughs> so yeah and then tengen comes in tengen's like yeah everything's going to get flashy now get ready and uh, yeah that's where it ends so that's it and uh, it was a fantastic episode i loved it you know we meet so many new characters get properly introduced to them we also get uh, all the answers to the mysteries that were surrounding what was happening uh, is there a second demon no apparently there is not a second demon but it is kind of like that because a separate entity is also involved in this which is part of daki so that also gets uh, answered the answer uh, another answer we get uh, is like where are like you know tengen's wives where they were there you go we also get that answer and um, yeah zenitsu has also being found and uh, everything is kind of going okay um but tanjiro i feel a little bit concerned about tanjiro because he, he's all alone over there so which I, I i don't know i feel like nezuko has to come out i feel like that that they're kind of directing this, this like you know, in, in that direction kind of taking it in that direction that nezuko will have to come out because tengen is currently involved in this so I doubt uh, uh, Tanjiro would be able to handle Daki on his own. Maybe Nezuko will come out and help him out. 
and oh boy if nezuko comes out daki is going to say to like you know like i don't know it's going to cap definitely try to capture her because as i said again like you know inosuke as soon as she saw inosuke she was like yeah capture him because you know like he, he she likes beautiful things and obviously nezuko and inosuke you know like so i'm sure if she, if she sees nezuko she's probably going to try to capture him uh, her just like how he she ordered the obi to keep inosuke alive my god <laughs> So yeah, that was it. Thank you guys for watching. This is my reaction to episode number 5 of Demon Slayer, the Entertainment District Art. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe. If you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know and I'll check them out. But no spoilers. So yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Demon Slayer, the Entertainment District Art. So until then, goodbye and have a nice day.